I want to welcome everybody to our first 4As webinar to actually be about the 4As and how to get the most out of your membership. My name is Molly Rosen and I'm the new head of agency relations and membership here at the 4As. And we wanted to do this webinar today because all too often we hear from our members that they don't actually know the full breadth of services and resources available to them. And they're often surprised when they find out all the different ways that we can partner with them to help drive their business. Whether that's our training programs, our consultations with our agency management services group, our resources from a research capabilities or our benefits and insurance programs, there's always something new. And we want to make sure that all of our members understand how to get the most out of their membership with the 4As. So to that end, I'm joined today with some of our members who are going to share how they work with the 4As to drive their business. To introduce them, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Bob Linden, who heads up our training and education group. Bob? Thank you, Molly. Good afternoon from New York, where we are streaming live to you. My name is Bob Linden, and I head up training activities at the 4As. You told us that one of your priorities was training. We heard you. In calendar year 2013, 4As conducted 37 webinars. In 2014, we have or will have conducted 44 webinars, and I expect that number to increase in 2015. This compares to only nine webinars conducted in 2010. Since 2013, 4As conducted 93 seminars covering such diverse topics as writing for SEO, project management, pitch management for new business, how to present remotely, and so on. But a subject we have never addressed deals with how to get the most out of 4As. Be prepared to hear yourself saying, I didn't know that. This is the very first live video webinar produced by the 4As. Our goal today is to inform, advise, and educate 4As members of the many services available to them. Over the next hour, you will be hearing from five 4As members in our studio, and we thank Ogilvy for use of the studio, and via webcam, one of our members from Nashville, who will tell you how their membership added to the success of their businesses. Since this is not the usual go-to webinar that we run, where you can type in your questions and I can see them on my laptop, you'll need to type in your questions via text using the number 917-873-3299, and I believe that number is shown on the screen. If and only if we have time near the end, I'll handle the Q&A section. So let's introduce our panel. First here in the studio is Kathleen Brookbanks. Chief Operating Officer, OMD New York. We welcome Diana Bald, Executive Vice President and Director of Marketing and Business Development from the Agency Assembly, located in New York. From the home of the Kansas City Royals, we welcome Sam Mears, President and CEO, Mears Advertising. We're also delighted to have with us here today my colleague, Laura Bartlett, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer. Sally Mars currently serves as Senior Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer, McCann World Group, New York. Welcome, Sally. Carrie Hatch is CEO of Washington, D.C. member, MDB Communications. Last but certainly not least, via webcam, direct from Music City, also known as Nashville, David Bohan, Chairman, Bohan Advertising. My thanks to each of you for coming here today for our first live streaming webinar about 4As. I'm sure this webinar will be repeated many times going forward. Over the next hour, we will barely scratch the surface of all of the services available to the members. To do the interviewing, my colleague and 4As Chief Marketing Officer and former editor of Ed Week, Allison Fahey. Allison, over to you. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Today, so we're going to dive right in, and we're going to first start with Sam. Sam, uh, we talked earlier about your agency being a really interesting time of transition right now, right. and how you're relying significantly on our management services group. Um, can you talk a little bit about how they're working with you on succession planning? Sure. Um, we started the succession planning thinking probably a year or so or go, Allison, and. Uh, one of the first things I did was reach out to Tom Finneran uh, at the 4As and just say, well, what, what should we be thinking about? How should we be thinking about this? Should We've been approached this year by three different private equity firms saying, 
you know, would we be, in, be interested in selling? And so it, it got a little bit more intense. And I've always wanted to think about how could I sell it to, you know, internally, um, but you can't ignore the fact that people are asking externally. Um, so Finneran uh, sent me a few different documents and brochures and PDFs and had many conversations. And I think probably the, the, the most interesting one was when he and I were in New York one time late, earlier in August, and he said, you know, you're an entrepreneur, right, Sam? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you make a terrible employee. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that's probably true. So it's so now it's down to, all right, well, how do we think about you know, the valuation of the company? And the forays is an amazing resource um, for those types of questions because they've seen it. I don't, I don't have any idea where I would go if it were not for the forays to get that type of information. Well, I would suspect you'd have to bring in maybe some sort of consultant right. or, um, you know, Price tag. Do you think that that's the way you would have had to I, go? I'm sure it is, and there are plenty of attorneys and, and consultants out there who, who do this, but they're not vetted. Uh, they're, they, they, we don't know their track record, and so you have to rely on just our experience, and yeah, that's a huge value of the four A's. And, and I don't think, you know, over the years, and we've been a member for 21 years, I don't think, um, I don't think we think about the value of certain aspects of the four A's until we need it. And even, even when we started this process, it took me a few weeks to say, you know, I should just ask Finneran about this. And th that comes from being engaged uh, wholly with the four A's, and, and you get back out of it what you put into it. And so you just got to know to ask the question. We talked a little bit about that, about you get what you put into it. And, right. and you felt that, um, um, and we're not going to send you an extra invoice, but you did, <laughs> you did say that you feel like you got um, more out of it than, than what your dues were. Right. Um, but then you also have friends who say, how do you get so much out of the four ways? It seems like you get more than I get, even though that everything is available to them. Right. What do you tell them? Um, to get more involved and, and to really stop and think about it. I think sometimes we become insular, and Carrie Hatch and I are both in the gold forum. Um, and that helps, too, because we get to sit around with our peers and, and talk about, well, what are you considering and, and what challenges are you having? And we just had a forum meeting in Kansas City this last week. And of all the agencies that were there, all but one was talking about succession planning in one way or another. It's like, well, you know, how do we do this? Well, it's great to have that forum, but it's also great to have the four A's backing that up. And, and Harley Griffiths, who, you know, heads our forum, um, you know, it, it's a tremendous resource that we have that we, you know, we take advantage of as often as we can. Great, great. So going to Carrie, because what I like about your story is that you were a longtime holdout. And now you refer to yourself as the poster child. Um, so what, why were you holding out in terms of joining as a member? Um, I think initially when I learned about the 4As, I, I thought about what they could offer, but I was more focused on what it would cost. And uh, the price tag, you know, at the time did not seem insignificant. Uh, I don't think I had a full understanding of the value, not just a list of services, but people that can help as a facilitator help me run my business. And um, I held out for, gosh, almost nearly a decade. And um, now Harley calls me in as the closer. Uh, <laughs> I am now the advocate for the 4As because we get so much out of it, uh, from the research to the gold forum that Sam mentioned, um, to just even the data on financial management, and then the inspiration that I get from other people in the 4As. Um, something that we had talked about was um, connections and, and networking, and, and we've helped facilitate some new partnerships for you. Could you speak to that at all? Uh, well, there have been a number of them, but uh, you might be referring to some of the legal connections that you've been kind enough to, to make on behalf of MDB. Um, some years ago, we were able to meet um, Rick Kernett of uh, Frankfurt Kernett, and uh, only recently have we had the need uh, with an IP issue that came up. Actually, it was one of those moments where, and I think as leaders, many of us can relate to this, it was an OMG moment where I was in a, a studio session uh, for a large recording contract that we had and had a real tough feeling in my stomach about something and I immediately jumped on the horn and I got right through to the law firm and said, you know, we're in session right now. Are we doing the right thing or is there exposure to this? And they, on the spot, Candace Kirsch uh, spoke up and, and saved me, basically. So that one episode was worth it. And there's a million of those incidents that I can share. So what, what was the tipping point? And uh, Did you have a, a friend who was a member who said, you know, jump on in? What was the final moment where you said, okay, I, I've held out long enough, 
I'm going all in. Um, some time ago, Hal Shoup, who was uh, down in the Washington office, had shared just this much data about financial management. Because I come from the creative side. I was an art director. So running a business wasn't top on my list of attributes. And I thought, this is just something I can't continue without. I must have it, and I must take the leap, and I must believe that it's going to be worth it, and it is. OK, good. So now we'd like to go to David. Um, you know, the, the advocacy that we do in D.C. Um, might not get the most coverage and it might not be the sexiest of topics, but uh, what we do down there is um, uh, protects the health and well-being of the agency community at large and our membership in, uh, specifically. David is a member of our Government Relations Committee. And David, you had a situation in your home state um, specifically about the ad tax deductibility that, that could have been financially disastrous. Could you talk to us a little bit about the 4A's role and how we helped you beat that back? Well, the, we had an interpretation, it wasn't a law, but it was an interpretation by the Tennessee Department of Revenue that because of some change in laws concerning the uh, broadcast equipment, that it became manufacturing equipment and therefore the product of that equipment was subject to state sales tax. So during a routine sales tax audit, our agency was assessed a fine for to pay nine and a quarter percent sales tax on all the broadcast advertising we had done in the state of Tennessee for three years prior. So we immediately called the four A's. They mobilized a coalition not only of advertising agency members, but broadcasters, publishers, and others to come together and really get this situation explained to both the elected and the appointed government officials in Tennessee, and we were able to solve that problem. So the 4As is great at forming coalitions. We don't fight battles alone and from the Washington office. We are always shoulder to shoulder with our clients and with our uh, other industry advocates to come together to solve problems on behalf of the advertising agency community. It's a great, great staff and really that support that we get is immeasurable and most agencies don't even think about that as a benefit of being members of the 4As. David, what would that have meant to your agency finances? Uh, we, if that three-year assessment uh, had gone back, we would have probably owed an additional half million dollars in uh, state sales tax and that would have potentially put us out of business because no client was going to pay that retroactively and uh, so basically any income that we would have had from media would have been uh, just gone. Thank you. So I want to talk a little bit about our research department, which is a, um, a frequently used service. And, and, and perhaps membership knows the most about that group. But let's talk to Diane a little bit about, in, you know, in your role, role as business development, exactly what services you get out of um, the research department and, and how you describe them as, um, as a part of your agency. Well, first of all, I mean, when you called me, I, I had to take a step back because you're like an extension of, of our team. And sometimes I, I forget that you're not, you're not part of us because you're the very first step that we go to throughout the, the customer funnel. So whether it's where, you know, when we're talking to somebody for the first time or we get an RFI or an RFP or we're getting ready for a pitch, you're the, you know, we, we come to you. And we ask you for research, and you, we ask you for everything. We ask you for industry research, research, um, research on the company. You give us key decision makers. You help us understand the customer journey. And then um, and my favorite thing that you've done for me is um, the SWOT analysis. So you've, uh, you've given us your perspective on the strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. And we put our own together, but it's nice to have that counter check with what you do right. and to see, you know, are we on the same track? Are they picking up the same thing that we are? And how do, how do you know um, about the research services that we offer? Um, is that information that you inherited at your agency? Is that something you sussed out for yourself? Did you pick up the phone? You know, how can other people get that information? Um, it's just picking up a phone, right? Yeah, we actually send you an email. Um, you know, we have we we just communicate with you directly by email. But we, you know, we inherited that from the agency, uh, and it's just been become 
a practice that we do all the time. And if you didn't have the services of our research department, what would that mean for you internally? Would that mean that you would have to hire those resources? Yeah, it would mean that we would have to put in extra hours. We'd have to you know, put in longer days, and we, we already work pretty tough, and, um, or, or have other people do it. I, I think it saves us about half a, half a person per project. Okay. That seems like it's worth the dues. Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to get back to Carrie for a second on the new business because I know that you use the research department a lot as well. Um, and, and that um, you believe that it's helped you get into some pitches and, and even get to late stage of pitches that maybe you didn't have the wherewithal to begin with? So early on, uh, after we joined the forays in 2000, uh, we had an opportunity to pitch the National Tuna Council. And um, I, I'll be honest with you, we had no industry or category experience uh, whatsoever. But we were intrigued. Um, we had an opportunity. We wanted to chase it. And we did make um, the short list. Uh, I, I've got to say purely because of the four A's, because they made us smart. They made us competitive. They got us into an open door that I wasn't really sure we should even pursue. But in this particular case, the industry information and as much as they could give us in the short amount of time that I gave them put us over the top. Great, good to hear that. Um, so Sally, let's talk about um, the partnerships that you have with the forays in your role as diversity officer. Um, if you could let us know how you work with our diversity and inclusion group and Singleton's group, um, specifically maybe touching on MAPE to begin with. Right, well, um, you have a great group of people who handle diversity and inclusion at the forays and if, um, people who are watching the webinar are not already involved in some way, please reach out and talk to Singleton Beato um, and tap into her group. I mean, I think as an industry, we all agree that diversity and inclusion is a priority, and we have to get it right, and we have to do it quickly. And I think our best um, chance of doing that as an industry is really going through the four A's. Um, you know, it's an opportunity for leaders, C-suite level people, to um, get smart about diversity and inclusion in the advertising industry because it is different in our business than it is in other businesses. And the 4As provides toolkits, um, resource materials, mm -hmm. and opportunities to get together with people who are at your same level. I am the chairman of the 4As Diversity Steering Committee, and I've had that honor for several years now. And uh, I work with a great group of people from different, agency, different agencies, large and small. We come together on a regular basis, and we talk through problems. We'll have a different subject matter for every meeting. Uh, sometimes we have guest speakers that come in and talk to us about best practices in another industry. Sometimes uh, chief diversity officers on the client side will come and talk to us. And it's a great way also to understand what's going on on the client side as well because they're dealing with their own challenges. Um, also through the committee we've uh, published some materials that agencies can use, some toolkits, some best practices guides on supplier diversity and how to get um, a diversity initiative going in your agency and how to tap into some of the pipeline programs, some of which mm -hmm. the 4As manages and some of which the 4As supports through the 4As Foundation. So um, MAPE, as you mentioned, which is the Multicultural Advertising Internship Program, has been around for more than 40 years. And there have been you know, uh, more than 1,000, maybe even 2,000 students, college students, who have gone through the program and have advanced in their careers in our industry. And it's a great pipeline program. I mean, I may be you know, prejudiced, but I think it's the best thing that the 4As does because we have uh, people at the ECD level, a um, guy that's the head of our new business group, uh, all 4As MAPE interns, former interns. And they stay involved as alumni, so tapping into the alumni of the program is great too. There are people who are you know, juniors, but there are also people who are mid-level seniors who are really the best and the brightest, and there's a very, um, strict uh, vetting process for MAPE interns every year, and we have more than 100 every year, and they're in uh, off agencies all over the United States. The breadth of the program is amazing. So that's one thing that I think um, if you're not using the 4As in any way, that's one thing that I would do to get 
the ball rolling with diversity? If, if you weren't involved with the FOIA's diversity initiatives and you were not receiving that talent that we were putting through the pipeline, where would you be getting that talent? Well, I think you, you'd have to have a number of different employees uh, in your company doing this job and maybe adding to staff. You know, you need people who go out to college campuses and you have a big travel budget involved in that. And then you have to have relationships with the advertising professors of all of these schools and the career offices of all of these schools, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, what the 4As does is it makes sure that it gets kids interested in advertising in the first place, which is a challenge, particularly for multicultural students. It goes into high schools. Um, we have two specific high schools that uh, are career and technical high schools that the 4As has helped start and continues to support. There's a school in Brooklyn and a school in Lower Manhattan that are high schools and teaching 21st century skills and specifically teaching students and getting them excited about a career in our business. So who else would do that? I mean, even if you were, you know, had limitless funds, you couldn't do that as a single agency. You right. need a governing body to say, let's all come together and support this as an industry. And that's what the 4As does best. So not to lead the witness, but um, <laughs> would you agree, like Diana says, that our, new, our, our research department is an extension of her agency, it sounds like you might feel the same way about our diversity group. Absolutely, I, I really think that we've made great strides. We still have a long way to go, but I think as an industry, we've made great strides in the pursuit of having a more inclusive um, industry, and I think the 4As is really at the forefront. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> Kathleen, let's talk a little bit about media and, and media relations. Um, you're on our board. So you kind of had to be here, but thank you, thank you anyway for coming. Um, and um, you're very involved with the Media Leadership Council and some very big media issues the industry is facing right now um, that the Fourier has has taken up and and working with partners on. Um, can you speak a little bit about the initiatives that you're spearheading as well with us? Absolutely. Um, I think you know in the media space it's a little bit. Um, different for the big media holding companies, one of which I'm a part of, which is it's not so much about coming to the forays so they can do something for our agency, but it is about making sure that we're an active participant in setting standards for the industry. So in media, I think the difference there is that you're looking for common currencies, you're right. looking for common measurement, because until we can get that across the board, in the, in the agency community, we, we then need to get that among the media vendors. Um, so it is not something any of us can do on our own. It is not an option. Um, and so right now, the Media Leadership uh, Council is working on a number of initiatives that are, I think are um, demonstrative of where our future is going and of critical importance that the industry solve for. Um, we have a council that is looking at measurement in mobile. You know, what should that look like? How do we measure it? What does effectiveness in the mobile space look like? Um, we have a group that's working on cross-platform measurement. Um, so how do we move away from these old nomenclatures of a GRP over here and you know something in a different in a different media type? Uh, the committee I'm personally very involved with is looking at addressability. Right. Um, so what is addressability? How do you define it? Today you might say it only exists in one or two media types, but what will it look like in the future? And if addressability is going to happen across media types, how do you put some kind of measurement in place that can happen across um, all of those media types when we still have different metrics? Um, and how do you get buy-in across all these large agencies that while we may compete with each other, need common standards in order for um, uh, what we do for a living, what we bring to our clients to advance um, to, a, to a common goal really that advances the industry and can, and can shift those measurements into redefining currencies. Right. A really, really right. critical piece for media. And, and to your point, and not to put Omnicom on the spot, but you don't believe that any holding company could tackle these issues on their own and create industry best practices. No, you can't. There isn't a holding company because even if we took it on and had the capability 
as Omnicom, our competitors could end up having different points of view. Mm -hmm. And the minute that happens, then you can't have a common currency with the media right. um, that we're dependent on. Right. So no one can take it on, right. on their own. Okay. It really could only happen through four A's. Very good. So, Laura, my colleague, um, I would like for you to speak a little bit about our um, benefits program, Capital B, not the, all the benefits of membership. But um, uh, I, I think that not everybody really understands um, uh, the, the number of people that we insure in the industry and, and the programs that we do offer and the, um, the many holding companies who, who outsource that to us. Can you speak a little bit to that? Uh, yes, I can. Thank you. Um, just as, as some of our members have been talking about uh, our services being an extension of what really happens in their agencies, we, we do have a group. Um, it's actually a separate group in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's called 4A's Benefits. And it's a company that provides um, retirement plan services and uh, various kinds of insurances for our agencies. And, you know, you might think that that's may be most useful to smaller agencies who are independent and need help in startup because, I mean, who wants to talk about insurance anyway? I mean, it's not a very sexy to topic, but certainly um, all businesses need to be involved in risk management and they need to understand how to best protect themselves. So um, we, we cover not only small uh, and medium-sized agencies, but also our workers' comp program um, which is which is very big. Uh, we insure um, employees in four of the five holding companies, and uh, in total for 600 agencies, uh, 600 mem member agencies, and the numbers there are huge. Um, and we've been doing this for uh, over 30 years, so we've gotten pretty good at it. And uh, we insure 127,000 individuals um, in 600 agencies, and that um, equates to eight. Point nine B. That's a B billion in payroll. So that's a really big number. And as you might imagine, that gives us uh, quite a bit of clout. We are a captive insurance company, and um, we happen to service an industry that we know well, our own. And it's not. Um, gee, we're not uh, building buildings or um, having hammers and nails and those sorts of things. So we have uh, we have pretty good history and. What that allows us to do is return um, part of the premium cost, the policy cost, to our members at, um, across the year or at the end of the year in terms of a dividend. So this year, um, our dividend was uh, $10.6 million back to our individual agencies. And uh, that represents uh, over 42% or about 42% of the policy cost. And that's been happening for the last 10 years, our, our, our dividends have been in the 40 to 45 percent range. So it's a really um, beneficial program and, and often uh, covers some costs. I was going to say, so for, for a, a, a good number of agencies that, that may be thinking, you know, I can't afford these dues at the moment, I have to assume that some of those dividend paybacks offset the cost of membership. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And, of course, insurance markets vary across states, and we can't insure in uh, a few states in the union because of state regs. But uh, we believe we offer very good value in terms of the dividend and also uh, in terms of the service. We have very experienced people who, have, who only deal with the advertising agency business, and uh, they're, they're, they're very helpful. In fact, uh, in many instances, will be the very first person or the first entity to hear about um, an unfortunate accident and be able to, to start at the moment uh, getting involved. Uh, but it goes beyond workers' comp. Um, we, we also have other businesses insur business insurances. Um, for those members who own their agencies and who are principals, of course, it's important to cover yourselves uh, in terms of having the right kinds of insurance, um, D&O, and and various liability insurances, including um, Cybertech, which has, of course, come to the fore. And um, we won't talk about patent trolls because we won't. But <laughs> uh, along with many other kinds of insurance, the Cybertech insurance is important. Um, also, we cover um, health insurance. And 
group life and accident insurance as well. And um, the largest single cost after payroll, uh, actual payroll cost, is normally uh, health insurances. And it's also a very important benefit to employees, as we all know, and we all probably participate in understanding the importance of it. So uh, we do offer a program through a captive insurance, uh, another captive insurance program. And we are not insurance brokers, but we do um, get very involved in designing programs that are, are very specific uh, to the demographics of our industry. And we believe they're also very cost effective and we provide service. Um, and, and last, um, we also manage retirement funds, 401ks, but even before there were 401ks, um, we go back 50 years in the retirement plan business. So again, we're highly experienced, and uh, we believe we give the best service uh, in, in the industry, and we, we look at the true cost of the programs, and we're totally con transparent so that uh, your employees, member employees, have this service through the 4As and can access uh, their accounts online and see exactly what it's costing them and what the results are. Very good. Thank you, Laura. Sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about training. Um, I know that most of you um, have used the, the training services. Sam, um, the executive leadership program, Right. can you speak to it? Yeah, totally. I, I went through it um, probably in the early 90s uh, when it was, I think it was in California. And um, I've sent one of my current staff to the executive leadership training, and I have another one coming in two weeks to New York. The, the, the program is really rather amazing if you've not taken it, if you've not thought about it. It's managing an agency in Perth, Australia for a three-year period in about five days, and it can best be described as agency. Virtually. Group. Virtually. We, we don't send yes. people there. <laughs> that would be quite the trip. Um, and really but, worth it. And really quite worth it. Yes, then it's really a value. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's three or four days of uh, what could only be described as agency boot camp. And I don't remember exactly how many decisions are made, but it's computer simulation, and it's like 300 decisions in three days. It's exhausting, and it's but it's it's the best training to help young people understand what it means to run an agency, and uh, it's it's relatively timeless. Also, I think it's been updated somewhat, but it's uh, the the issues you face uh, in senior management, uh, they're the issues you face from mm -hmm. workers comp. To diversity, everything we've talked about here today, and that's all covered um, in the ELP. Right, very good. Um, I, I want to talk a little about the forums because I do hear from membership that forum engagement um, is is one of those things. When they are engaged with a the forum, they do feel like they're getting a lot out of that. I think you'd refer to your gold forum as therapy session, business therapy. Business therapy um, for what, CEOs. What goes on uh, in those forum meetings? Um, a large part of it is validation. You share similar experiences, but that's okay. There's a certain portion of it where you can learn from other people, whether it's a contract dispute or an HR issue. And uh, in my case, since I'm the sole shareholder, you know, not being alone <laughs> right. is great to hear right. from other CEOs and how they've creatively solved a problem that maybe you're coming upon, or just even being able to pick up the phone or create an email within our gold forum to survey, you know, how do you handle things, uh, you know, different leave policies, maternity leave, you know, how do you handle different issues on collections, perhaps, or right. other issues? Right. Um, it, it seems, I, I've sat in on only a couple so far, um, but it seems that they're much more candid than most agency roundtable discussions that are even held in private. Um, is that true, and why would that be? There is a, a trust that forms over a number of years, but even so, I mean, when we have new members uh, join, you immediately recognize the authenticity of everything that is said in that room. You also know that it's not going anywhere else. So there is a bond between the CEOs uh, that are part of a forum, and we do help each other out. I mean, even when it's you're doing a, a search uh, for a creative director mm -hmm. or you know chief mm -hmm. creative officer, we do help each other out on many many issues. Very good. And, and David, back back to you out there. Um, I, I know that you had um, uh, engagement with forums as well, and um, uh, I think that you had mentioned. The value that you get out of forums, and also the the um, management practitioners forum, uh, the, the a transformation. Can you speak to that, please? 
Yes, the Management Practitioners Forum is the day before the start of the transformation conference, and it is, uh, I, I described it at one time, it's like a forum meeting on steroids. You might have 200, 300 people in the room talking about issues that affect agencies that, you know, are primarily the independent agency members of, of the 4A that are there talking about their problem, sharing their experience, and how they solve problems in a very practical matter. Uh, between the two forum meetings that I attend annually and the Management Practitioners Forum, if that, those are the only three times that I got involved in the 4A, it would be more than worth the dues payment. But if you take the other advantages for training that the 4A offers through the regional council, that is really a benefit to your agency, your agency staff, and the forums and the management practitioners forums give your senior staff the opportunity to hear stories from other people that are being successful and have solved problems that are common to our industry. Very good. Um, I think that you also talked about some other uh, benchmark materials that, that you get from the management services group. I, I understand you use the agency cost uh, report to have a whole yes. staff meeting around that. Can you tell me how we you do. utilize that material? Uh, every year in January, we give a recap of our previous year's performance uh, to the staff about how we did in terms of you know, our, our gross income production and I'm going to detail about how our expenses compare to our peer agencies in, in the 4A. And I think it really gives the staff a perspective of our agency and how we are doing by comparison to other agencies that are members of the 4A. In addition, we use the salary survey extensively to benchmark the pay scales for each position we have in the agency. So we look at agencies all over the country in our gross income size range, and then agencies of all size in the Southeast region to compare how we're doing on a base salary level for account executives, art director, whatever position it is, and look at that survey information just to make sure that we are being competitive in what, uh, what we're paying because we all know the hyperbole that might exist between peers uh, in, in our industry about what you make. So this is real solid information. It gives, and it, over time, this builds a tremendous amount of trust to the staff for the management of the agency that we're treating them fairly. And you feel it actually is a morale builder? Oh, definitely, because, uh, you know, when you go into that January staff meeting and people that are there for the first time and you're pretty much giving them a full detailed financial report on how the previous year turned out. I've had many people come up and say, well, don't you, aren't you scared to give me this information because of where it might end up? And I said, no, we trust you. It's just, you know, we're all in this together as an agency and we're going to build a better agency by having people being more transparent as managers and also having more trust from our employees. And, and Carol, you're nodding, so you use these benchmark reports as well. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I do. Um, the other thing that's really wonderful about the 4As, uh, we use the flip side of that to demonstrate the expenses, because not everybody who's a creative person or someone who's in production or is in the studio or an account executive fully understands how agencies make their money and how they can impact the bottom line positively or negatively. And when you demonstrate, you know, what it costs in terms of office supplies or year over year, and right. that could have gone into the bonus pool. And when you benchmark it against other agencies of your own size, it brings, it right sizes the credibility of what I'm sharing and what other agencies are doing. And it does win over uh, friends and allies in managing costs and expenses. Very good. Kathleen, what would you say to agency, to media agencies who think that the 4As is more focused on um, integrated agencies, small independent agencies, or creative agencies? Well, I, I mean, I would say certainly in the media space that the four A's, it's, it's not about the size of the agencies. It is about the progression of our industry that they're focused on. And, and I feel that in everything 
um, that I'm involved with on the with the media leadership team. So it is not about size; it is about our industry and where we're going as an industry. That they're focused. On. Why would you think that that um, some media agencies would have that perception, and and they may be holdouts like like Carrie was for so right. many years? Well, you know, I think first of all, when when you are um, big, you think you have the resources, and if you're not really in touch with the kind of work they're doing and understanding that it's not about whether it's another agency's point of view versus your point of view, but that it's about progressing our industry. If you're really not understanding what we're doing, it's all too easy to think that you want to go it alone and that it's about um, somehow compromising an individual point of view. Um, right. And, and it's not. And Sam, the other services that, that from, from besides the succession planning right. that you're working on, the vetting of the private equity firms that have approached you, um, you're a, a, a high-end user of, of some of the reports that come out of that group as well, right? Yeah, it's really interesting when you start connecting the dots between um, the salary survey, the cost survey, um, and a lot of the, the, the other surveys that just come out throughout the year. If you participate, you get to share. And I think that's a, that's a really key point. And you know, as, as owners and senior leaders, you look at that and you say, well, how can we connect the dots? And sometimes, again, you pick up the call and pick up the phone and call the four A's and ask the question of, have you guys thought about this? And actually, Tom Finner, and when we, when we were talking this summer, and I, I finally called back and said, you know, it, it's now been three different um, private equity companies. He said, send me their names. I want to start tracking this. And so now the 4A's is tracking who is doing this, and you're starting to see articles in Ad Age and Ad Week coming out about the middle market, you know, of acquisitions taking place in the middle market, uh, which is totally different than the big five, you know, holding companies. So there's all these reports help paint a picture of, of management that um, we, I, there's just no other way we would get it without the forays. Diana, agencies that are, that are members who are not using the research services currently, what advice would you give them? Well, I, I, one thing I didn't mention to you was the accounts and review. Okay. I, I check out the accounts and review at least once or twice a year, and it's really helpful for for biz dev people to to see you know, what accounts have gone in review, who's who've, who's managed those accounts. Are they creative or media? If they're creative, you know, media might be around the corner. Um, and with regard to you know folks that are not taking advantage, I, I think they just a quick look on the on the website every quarter. I discover something new, without a doubt, um, you know, or, or just a phone call to the four A's. Fair enough. Um, David, you have um, an interesting theory um, as to why uh, certain members may not be fully engaged or why certain members have not gone from um, interested to becoming membership. Kathleen mentioned when you're a large agency, you may feel like you have all the answers. Um, you have a, a little bit of a similar theory? Well, that's for more of the independent agencies, the founders. Sometimes we have to believe we have all the answers uh, <laughs> because uh, that, in, in the understanding that the collegiality of the 4A membership, and not only through the forum program, but through other programs that, uh, I mean, I've had the opportunity to visit agencies, large and small, all over the country. And those agencies are very willing to share and have conversations with you about the problems that, that they face. And the admission that you really need to can go out and find those answers. And because when I founded my agency that's celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, uh, I had just I had worked at an agency that was not very well run. So I did I knew I needed to find answers, and I went to the four A's and applied for membership before we could qualify and had a service to new agencies program at that time. So for three years, we, until we got our financials in shape to be qualified for members, membership, we took advantage of every opportunity and every conference that we could go to to learn about how to run an advertising agency. And I give a lot of the credit to our being uh, named Ad Age Southeast Agency of the Year this year to the 4A, they really do. Well, um, you're welcome. 
<laughs> and congratulations. You. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. Molly, let's talk a little bit about membership and, and how to get involved. Uh, it, it, you know, you, you talk to these folks, and obviously they're here. We stack the deck. They're here for a reason. <laughs> they're happy, engaged members. And, you know, in the, in the six months I've been here and even a little bit less for you, I think that all the membership conversations that we have, the more engaged a member is, um, the more value they get, obviously. But um, I have spoken to a couple of members who think that um, uh, access is limited within an agency to a certain number of people. Can you, can you address that myth? I can, and nothing could be further from the truth. So the great thing about membership is the agency holds the membership, which means everybody from the receptionist all the way up to the CEO can access any of our, our resources, whether they do it through our online uh, resources, whether they pick up the phone and call a department head, anybody has access to all of the resources at the Forge. And, um, you know, the forums, which are always um, a hot topic when, yep, when we talk definitely. to members, uh, some people think that there's this big mystery around the forums and it's like this sort of, you know, selection committee involved oh, and to be a, a forum member mystery. you have to apply. It's calling me. It's calling <laughs> you. Okay. Mystery solved. So we do, we ha do we have her number floating <laughs> on the bottom somewhere? 212-850-0753. No, but seriously. You're going to be sorry. I know. Well, you know. <laughs> My voicemail is going to be full soon, but um, no, I mean, in all seriousness, it really is as simple as, as picking up the phone and either calling me or one of the other um, representatives. Um, you know, we want to get as many people involved in these programs as possible because of the benefits that you've heard from Carrie and from um, Sam and David. And, um, you know, we will always work very hard to make sure that we're getting as many people who want into the program into the program. Um, and where there's a forum, there's a committee. <laughs> when there's a forum, there's a committee. So or a the difference or a, would be. So our so forums are meant for um, our small to mid-sized agencies from various geographical regions um, that come together to discuss um, issues that all CEOs and principals face, et cetera, as we've talked already. Our committees are really more discipline specific. Um, so, for example, I head up the strategy committee. There's one for project management, one for. Um, large agency finance and small agency finance. So pretty much for anything that you would want to um, get involved with, there's a committee dedicated to that. And again, it is as simple as raising your hand and saying that you want to be a part of it. Fair enough. Um, and Sally, so so the diversity issues on behalf of the industry, obviously, um, you had spoken to. I, I, I want to get a little bit more specific about how McCann has benefited have benefited from those efforts and those initiatives. You mentioned that you have um, a significant number of MAPE interns that have come through and still come through. Your ECD yeah. is a former MAPER, as we call them? That's right, Van okay. Graves. So um, in, terms of, in terms of talent and other uh, initiatives that we've worked with with McCann, what would you say you know, was the benefit of those? Well, uh, you know, as the Chief Diversity Officer of McCann, World Group, it's not like I've got a big team of people working on this. It's me and uh, one other colleague, uh, Siobhan Hodges. And what's great about being part of the committee is you can bring different things that are going on in your agency or issues that you're grappling with and find out how other people solve those problems. And everybody's got the same issues at every single agency when dealing with diversity. So, um, but it's nice to be able to go to a group of people who are as passionate about solving those problems as you are and, um, you know, find ways together that you can come up with ideas. And nothing's impossible when you have the power of the four A's behind you. You have all these big agencies and small agencies and all of this energy and the support from the leadership of the four A's. Um, Nancy herself is the chief diversity officer of the four A's. And I think that made a significant um, impact on my decision to get so involved in the four A's diversity steering committee because she took such an active role in solving these issues herself. And that theme of coalition building, which um, David first started speaking about that we do in DC, the same on you know the diversity front, and um, Kathleen, can you speak to a little bit because those big media issues are are are, are big and they cover many different industries in yes. some cases, and, and there's different associations along the way. There are. So there are we're involved with coalition building on the media issues as yeah. well, right? 
Yes, very much so. I mean, for example, we have been working closely with the Media um, Ratings Council um, because we are looking at um, defining um, measurement in digital. And there are, we're doing that across five um, areas. They've completed three out of the five. And the idea was that we wanted to have alignment um, from all of the agencies part of 4As with the Media Research Council before that work came out so that we could be supportive of the work when it finally came out as an industry. Um, we're very involved right now working with the ANA on the highly controversial subject of programmatic um, and trying to um, keep the lines of communication open between the agency community and our clients. So we're very actively involved with that right right now. Fair enough. So we're, we're coming up on the, the 10 minute mark. We're going to be opening up to questions soon. Um, but before we do, we hope that there's questions from the viewing audience. Um, but, but just in this table alone, uh, before we move on, what advice would you give a member agency who has said to you, you've already said, you know, uh, get involved more, pick up a phone. But um, but for anybody else who, uh, you know, an agency member who may not be as engaged with the committees and the forums and, and maybe not feeling they're getting the most out of that, what, what would be your advice? Diana? Um, I, I would follow you on, on the 4A, uh, on Twitter. I'd follow you on Twitter because, you know, you, 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 you give us the relevant stuff to look it up there. And okay. Then. And Kathleen? You know, I would pick the one area that um, you haven't been involved with and call, a, pick up the phone, call the person who leads that. If it's if it's the media space, it's Bill Tucker, um, who's doing you know an amazing job. And I think in a 20-minute phone call, you'd be amazed at how much is going on in any one of these um, categories. Would you be surprised if, if I told you that that um, it's become clear recently, which is why we're doing this webinar, that there's a good percentage of membership that aren't aware of all these benefits? Yeah. That surprises you? No. It doesn't no, surprise no. you. No, I, I, I think the uh, I think the four A's does a good job of communicating, but it, I think people have a hard time understanding the relevance. And if I were going to say do one thing, it's pick up the phone and call an active four A's member, and and just say you know why do you pay the dues? What do you get out of it? Right. Um, that's that's well you are leaving the phone number for the audience right okay, yes. so they can call you because you're our best right. salesman <laughs> that's right that's right Carrie advice for um, a current member who may be not that active or a prospect on the fence I would uh, go to the website because that's the menu that you know kind of gives you an idea of different areas that might be most relevant to your particular situation uh, I would say do it because it makes you more competitive um, and that's the bottom line for me anyways. It makes us smarter, it makes my team smarter, it sets a standard, and it's also as a uh, small to medium-sized independent agency, it's a credential in a pitch. And one other plug I want to get in here because I use this so frequently is contracts and contract negotiations mm -hmm. and um, the discipline that it takes to push back on spec creative and mm -hmm. ownership and mm -hmm. things like that. All those things that you deal with as the head of an agency or new business development are within the four A's. And it's within, I'm help. sorry, I'm sorry to answer. And within contract negotiations, compensation negotiations with clients. Absolutely, absolutely. Very valuable. I, I had a friend recently who's, whose agency is not a member who, who called up, you know, her largest client is trying to renegotiate her, you know, fairly hysterical, give me your, give me your login for the pad, for the website, <laughs> because she needed the members only um, content behind there. So we'll make them become a member and then she'll that get the stuff. That happens to me all the time. People <laughs> call and they want the free stuff. There's a black market. No, I love the you to death, but join. <laughs> <laughs> right. And right. Sally, some words of advice? Well, the way I got involved in the forays um, and, and the Diversity Steering Committee is um, I got to the point in my career where I wanted to do something uh, and give back a little bit. And so I went to um, our former chairman, um, Gene Kummel, mm -hmm. who had been very involved in the forays and other organizations. And I said, you know, Gene, you do so many things to help the industry. Is there something that I could do? Can you point me in a direction? And he handed me this book, and he said, here are all the committees of the 4As. And it was a rather thick book. And he said, find something that interests you, and I'll get you on that committee. So I flipped through the 500 or so different committees, and, and uh, I found this diversity steering committee. And I said, that's something that I want to get involved in. And 
here it is 10 or 12 years later, and you know, it's been a constant in my career journey. Great, glad to hear. So we, before we bring Bob back up with hopefully questions from the audience, um, I wanted to, to thank you all for sharing your stories. Is there any area that you don't feel we covered well enough? I'm sure Bob will say training. <laughs> yes, Bob. Okay, come up here and do your training pitch. <laughs> No training pitch, but uh, as I suspected, lots and lots of comments. Great. We had no idea. I mean, we had no idea the scope of services. But let's go to the questions. And we're getting a lot of questions, which we will never get to. But let me read some of the questions. Okay. Um, let's see. And this is a misperception. Does being a 4A's member require MyHC to be a union signatory and hire non and hire union performers? No. 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 No, yeah, but but a lot of agencies. I know, in unison now. No, no. a lot of agencies think that we could have a whole webinar dispelling yes. the myths, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Not today. David and Sam, you touched upon this about the forum program, but someone is asking, can you elaborate on the format and the topics covered? Oh, that's Sam, good. you just yeah. shared ours. Yeah, Why yeah, don't you do it? Yeah, I just did one in yeah. Kansas City. So. The format was very simple. We, we visited two agencies, VML and Barclay, and uh, we also visited Sporting Kansas City, uh, the soccer team in Kansas City. But then we also spent two half days talking about uh, burning issues and agency updates, and that's where the real um, intensity and, and the learning comes. Uh, David, anything to add to that? Well, what, uh, what, what, no, are the, what were the burning issues? I mean, you have to tell us what you talked about. I mean, the topics, but well, not exactly. Well, those are confidential, I assume. <laughs> not the burning <laughs> issues. That's no, a, they're not. But, the, um, but, but ours, a lot of them dealt uh, with, you know, uh, staffing, uh, okay. with um, uh, diversity, with um, succession planning, with profit, with billing, okay. uh, with billing practices, with product development, intellectual property okay. development. Those were some of the topics of this last week's. That's a lot of that's a lot of ground to cover. David, did you want to add to the forum experience? Uh, I think it it is the, the depth of those discussions that Sam talked about about the issues and our our forum. Each member submits in advance five areas of concern that uh, or questions that they have, and it's a responsibility of the other forum members to be prepared to provide advice and counsel from their own experience, and. Uh, uh, that type of sharing just doesn't happen. I mean, a lot of people in the agency world belong to networks to get that. The forum experience kind of negates the need to be involved in an agency network, from my opinion. I'm sure we'll be hearing from those agency network people. Thank <laughs> I'm sure you, you will. <laughs> I Allison, that. I, I just want to add yes. that uh, from the 4A's perspective, a uh, part of the format is the forums uh, are really forums so that they are not competitors sitting in right. the group and I think it's really important right. for others to understand that well, it's, it's it's built in such a way that there are not direct competitors together in the same room well that's how they get the such a to a such right. a, a candid conversation candid, right by really sharing what's right. what's up with them right. Bob another question from the uh, audience another please. question from the audience have you well, how have show. you used the four A's to prospect for new business Diana? Well, the, the, the accounts and review is an excellent tool for that because if, if uh, you see that account came up for review this year, then they're not a good prospect for new business because they're, you know, they just selected an agency. Um, so keeping tabs on the accounts review, uh, you know, for multiple years is, is a great way to do that. Okay. Also on the website, there are um, uh, many, many press releases about new business, just one. So besides the agents, uh, the accounts review, there's just the constant feed of news releases about the account movement. So that might help as well, yeah? Yeah, okay, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. I do. <laughs> See? We could have had another whole conversation. Bob. Quick question. Uh, what types of agencies are eligible for membership? I think there's a common misperception that only creative agencies or maybe media agencies are eligible. And the fact is that pretty much any type of agency is, is, uh, is eligible. I think the way we like to talk about it is if you create marketing communications or place marketing communications, you are eligible for membership and a welcome part of the community. Very good. On an individual level, what's the best way to get involved in our local market via forays? And this is someone writing from a Minneapolis agency. Well, we have a, actually a great community out in Minneapolis. So I would say, you know, reach out to the local council. 
is one way to get involved if you are interested in influencing the <coughs> local market. As we mentioned before, there are the committees, which are a great way to get involved as well, so you can influence a specific sphere of uh, the industry. Um, or just reach out and call. If you also have a passion project, you know, these are things that we're interested in hearing about too. So I'll give my phone number again at the end, but again. <laughs> Molly, did you want to speak about the um, reps in the field? Definitely. So thank you. Good segue. So um, in addition to myself, there are four fabulous reps uh, in the field. Uh, Harley Griffith, who represents the eastern region, Lori Stern in the central region, Greg, uh, Jerry McGee in, uh, out in California for the western region, and Greg Walker down in the southern region. They are tireless workers who are dedicated to the agencies in their regions and are always available for, uh, for questions or for help. Thank you, Bob. And you get the last word. Uh, I get the last word, which I will. Well, for, first of all, thank you all very, very much. Um, thank, the, thank the audience for um, tuning in. We hope that you understand a little bit more about what we do with the forays and, and the value of membership. I'm going to give the last few seconds to Molly. Perfect. So again, thank you to everybody who participated for giving your time and sharing your experiences. I also hope that everybody who is listening today picked up at least a few new tips on how to engage with the forays. Obviously, we can't cover everything here today. So I, again, I will share that my phone number is 212-850-0753. Or you can also reach me at mrosen, M-R-O-S-E-N, at aaaa 4 org. And uh, we hope to hear from you. With that, thank you.